Natasha Denona has done it again. In today's video, I am going to be reviewing the brand new Natasha Denona Metropolis palette that just released. So if you are interested in seeing my thoughts on this palette, a tutorial for the look that I did today, and then of course some swatches, then just keep watching. that this palette arrived today so this technically is my first impression however I would definitely consider myself to be quite knowledgeable about Natasha Denona and all of her formulas and the quality of her products so though I have not fully tested every single eyeshadow in this palette just by swatching them and using what I've used thus far I think I have a pretty good handle on this palette let's talk about the major details this palette is available right now you can order it online at Sephora it is $129 which of course sounds like a lot but if you know Natasha Denona's brand this is actually a little bit more affordable believe it or not for 28 shades this will be available in store starting September 26th so that is coming up in in the next couple of weeks. Online, this palette is described as a palette with 28 brand new shades and two new formulas of Natasha Denona's iconic professional quality pressed pigment eyeshadows in a never before seen midi size. So M-I-D-I, -I, not mini, midi. So kind of in the middle because she does have her little mini palettes. So these are the midi size. Just kind of also looking online, these are free of parabens, it's cruelty free, and they're hydrating and smooth for for optimum texture and comfortable all day wear. So let's talk about the packaging, of course. So this is one of her packaging where it's not the hard plastic. It's one of the more soft touch palettes, which is like her full size 28 pound palettes, the Lila palette, the Sunset palette, things like that. I think it is a little bit odd that she has two completely different types of packaging that she often goes for like one or the other. It's like just random. You never know what you're gonna get. It's this beautiful kind of really deep teal or forest green kind of shade very interesting and then you open it up you get a mirror and then of course you reveal the 28 shades so just you can see kind of pan size comparison and all of that good stuff so here is the other most recent sunrise palette from Natasha Denona and I just want you to take a look at the layout differences so the pans are much closer kind of jam-packed in there which I really like but it also causes for some cross-pollination of the pigments and also there is a plastic shade on these like all of her other ones it's not on the actual palette and then also just so you can see based on the size compared to the sunrise palette which is one of her smaller palettes it is only a touch more little and then the Leela palette, just so you can see size comparison, they are almost the same. The Metropolis palette is just a touch smaller, and I'm going to show you the pan size comparisons. The pans, again, are much more spaced out in this one, and here is the sizes compared to this one. And I knew from reading online that this was going to be a midi size palette. I was interested to see if it would be full size and how exactly big it would be. And then here is a, another 28 pan palette that I have. This is the blue purple. So this is kind of like the third edition because she's had the two 28 pans for such a long time in her line. So I was really excited to see that she was adding another one. So here's kind of the differences. So similar layout, just smaller and more jam packed. Now, obviously from doing my research online before I purchased this, I knew it was a midi, uh, but before I did my research, I thought it was gonna be one of the big ones, but I was so excited to find out that this was a midi palette. So you can get the 28 pan palette for much, much cheaper. So let me do a quick price breakdown for you guys. Just looking at the numbers that I pulled from online, the Metropolis midi size is about half the size of the regular pans found in the original 28 and the other classic palettes like the Sunset, Lila, and Safari, the value per pan is close to equal. So basically, it's like they took her 28 pan palette and just cut the amount of product in half and literally cut the price in half as well, which Natasha Denona also did with the Sunrise palette and I gave her so much praise. She made these amazing palettes before that had so much product, but it was 
was so expensive. So it was great that you were getting a lot of product, but you were also paying upwards of $200 a palette. I mean, and I know for somebody like me who just has a lot of eyeshadows for no reason, there was no way I was gonna even use up a single pan. So the fact that I get to pay less for less product and the value is still the same is the best thing I think Natasha could have done for her brand. I think even just from the Sunrise palette, it really elevated her brand, it opened people's eyes, and people really felt good about purchasing that palette and supporting the brand. So I think she's making a really great transition in her brand to making these still very high price, but just a better quality without cutting corners and taking advantage of her customers. I will say though where the value is bad, and this is kind of unrelated, she is coming out with another mini one. The value is pretty bad in her mini ones. These are 25 and you get basically little to nothing in here. Again, for me with so many eyeshadows, I really don't care. I think it's great, but this is a bad value. This is actually a very, very fair value. So like, you know, with this one, she kind of tricked you a little bit and just gave you a tiny, tiny bit of product and the value just isn't there. This, it is here, there's no trick which is amazing. So enough jibber jabber, let's get into the actual palette itself. So I already showed you what the palette looks like, but let's talk about the individual formulations in here. So looking at the palette, we have three matte shades, 10 creamy matte shades, one duochrome, two high shimmers, and 12 metallics. Now the information that I was getting this from was actually from the names on this sheet right here. It says the name of the color, but it also gives a number and an initial for the formulation. So M is matte, CM is creamy matte, DC is duochrome. So that's just kind of given the Natasha Denona formula names here. The difference between the matte formula and the creamy matte formula is you can literally feel it in the pan. There are three matte shades that are more powdery and then the majority of the matte shades in this palette, they feel like cream, they apply like cream. There really isn't too much fallout when you're swatching. There is a little bit of fallout on your eyes, but you can seriously feel the difference in the formula. And the powder mattes, they are creamy they're like a soft powder whereas the creamy matte formula is a little bit more dense and thick just something to keep in mind as far as application goes because that matte formula is going to blend a little bit easier than the creamy matte there is one duochrome shade which is right here it's a beautiful shade it's a coral with light greenish reflex and then there's two shimmers which are a little bit more flat and then her 12 metallics which feel more wet to the touch and more creamy. So the formulas that are kind of explained, they definitely correlate to the palette. I definitely see it, I feel it. And that is what is so great about the Natasha Denona formula is just the amount of texture and depth and all that good stuff on your eyes. That is what makes her palettes very, very special. And I will say from playing around with this palette, the quality of this is insane insanely good. I think that the creamy formula with a brush, you do have to kind of add a little bit of extra work in, but it does look so smooth on the lid. And you can feel from swatching all of these shades that these shadows do almost feel really dense and thick, but they swatch beautifully, they apply beautifully, they apply so pigmented. It just is a pigmentation that you cannot get with a regular powder formula, especially with those high shine metallic shades. I really can't go into do much more depth about the formulation other than it is fantastic. They are so thick, so creamy, so pigmented, and the palette is so rich and pigmented that it is going to look fantastic on medium to deep skin tone. I feel like for me there were a couple shades missing that I would have liked that were a little bit lighter, but who cares about me? This is great on medium to deep skin tones. I think you will really like the colors in here. They're going to complement your skin tone extremely well. So now I want to get into the color story and my initial thoughts. So online, when I first saw it, it didn't look that interesting to me. The colors themselves look kind of boring and also I thought the layout was a little bit sporadic and random and it just looked a little bit messy and not as uniform as a lot of her other palettes that I really enjoy. I was hoping that with her 28 pan palette, she would come out with more of a theme. Like she had her brown green palette and then she has her purple blue palette. I wanted kind of another 
similar color story like that and this one just seemed like a random bunch of colors thrown in here now that I've seen it it's in my hands I've played with it I'm much more excited about it you can see the textures that just didn't show through in the photos so it is stunning I do still think that the layout is a bit weird and more sporadic than I would prefer and I still wish she had stuck with a the color theme but this palette is much better and prettier than I was expecting it to be the palette runs pretty warm but you definitely can get some cool looks as well looking at this I think this palette is going to be absolutely perfect for fall it's just so warm and the colors the golds the browns this rich cranberry color they're just gonna be so beautiful in the fall so I think this is a great palette to pick up so I did want to show you what colors I used to create this eye look today. I of course wanted to go for a little bit more of the bold colors so that I wasn't doing a boring neutral look but you know what her neutrals are spot on as well. You can get really gorgeous multi-dimensional kind of looks just simply using her neutral colors but I always feel like the colorful shades are the ones that are the true test. So the first color that I went into and I'm not gonna say names I'm just gonna point because it just makes my life easier. So the first shade that I used is this kind of mustardy shade right here and I used Use that as my starter color now it actually pulled a little bit more yellow on my eyelids than I was expecting I still think it's beautiful I wish it would have had a little bit more of that, a green undertone to it but it still is really pretty it blended on like a dream this one seems to be more of that powder formula and then the next shade that I went into was this shade right here it looks like more of a mossy green now this one is that cream matte formula so you will notice it does have a shine to it that's another way to tell the the powder formula from the creamy matte formula and you're not going to get any fallout when you stick a brush in it. I don't think it takes away from the pigmentation on the lid. I actually think it controls it more so that yeah you might need to build a little bit more than you would with a powder shade but it's not as messy. And then the next shade that I took was with a really small brush and I took this deep forest green shade again that creamy matte formula and I started putting that in the inner and outer corner of my eyelid. That was really putting that creamy matte formula to the test which I really liked. I liked how easy it was to blend and how easy it was to build and how not messy it was. Now if you do take your brush and you start to dig in it a little more yeah you're gonna get fallout with that creamy formula but honestly it's nothing like you would with a powder formula and then the next shade I took to add some more definition to the eye and also add a fun blue element to it because we were leaning very green is I took this really dark navy shade right here now the only thing I don't like is I feel like this shade and the shade are unnecessary to have both they are different and you will see that through swatches but on the eye they kind of play the same game you use them for the same purpose but anyways this shade I was also very impressed with usually with really dark matte shades they're super powdery and they're super messy because this was that cream formula it really just added the perfect amount of depth to the eye and I did leave this little middle part of my eyelid blink and I used this gold shade with a little bit of green in it and I just applied that into the center of my lid now like all shimmer eyeshadows from Natasha this doesn't work as well with a brush it can get a little bit messy if you use it with a brush. It does look beautiful applied with a brush. Your best bet is to use your finger. That's how you're going to get the most out of this formula. Beautiful, so buttery, smooth, creamy, pigmented, shiny, everything you want in a shadow. Stunning. So then I went on to my lower lash line. I wanted to play with some more colors and we stuck very green on the top. So I wanted to add a little bit more of a twist. So I did just take this shade and this shade and I mixed them and kind of put it in the outer part just so that it would be a really smooth transition. But the next shade that I took was this kind of shimmery green shade right here, a very deep blue teal green shade. And I just applied that right to the center of my lower lash line. Really stunning. This is gonna make a really fire deep smoky eye color one day. And then I took the lighter blue right here, which is still pretty deep, but I did apply that to the inner part of my lower lash line. And that's what added like a really cool blue element to this look so it starts off green and then the bottom is blue here but it doesn't look so random like it looks like it belongs and there is a flow this look was so easy to create because of the amazing formulas in this palette so Natasha Denona she has a reputation for kind of being a little bit inconsistent sometimes this is good this 
is a thumbs up stamp of approval. One of her better palettes formulation wise, if you ask me. I just think she really hit the nail on the head with this one. So I think that this palette is going to be great for somebody that doesn't have a ton of Natasha Denona palettes. Wants just a good staple Natasha palette to have in their collection that they can create a lot of looks with. This one is pretty good for the everyday person, if you ask me. If you like your neutrals and sometimes want to amp it up every now and then, this is fantastic. I mean, you guys know who you are. You know what types of colors you would use, but I definitely see an everyday person who wants to dive into the Natasha Denona world with an actual palette, not just one of her minis. This one is a good way to go, and I do believe it is limited edition, so... Just saying. Now, I saw online there was a lot of people talking about similarities to other palettes. Now, I'm not going to do swatch comparisons just because when you swatch it, there's a lot of shades that you think would be the same, but they're just slightly different. So I'm just going to kind of pinpoint what palettes have similar families in them and not do actual swatch comparisons because you know what? Every palette needs to have browns. That's just the way it is. And Natasha likes to incorporate a lot of browns in her palettes. So yes, every palette that has a brown probably is going to have a similar brown in here. So there is that th comparison. So I do just want to talk about the general ones. So I'm going to lay this right next to the Sunrise palette and very similar colors I do notice. So we have some of the warmer tones. Now I wouldn't say there are any dupes as far as mattes goes, just looking at it. The Sunrise palette, it just has a little bit more brightness, whereas the Metropolis palette has a little bit more neutral shades. So again, same family, but a different vibe overall. You do have a raspberry shade that is very similar, and some of the more goldy kind of neutral colors, again, very similar. So I would say these do have a lot of similarities to them, but the Metropolis, you're just getting a lot more colors, so it doesn't seem to be quite as warm as the Sunrise palette, because this one has a color theme. I think that the Metropolis has more pops in it. So comparing it to the purple blue palette, yeah, you can pick out one or two colors that are similar, but actually these palettes are completely different. So if the Metropolis palette was a full size, I definitely wouldn't stray away from purchasing it because it's like my other 28 Pam palettes because it's really not. And laying it next to the brown and green palette, you can pick out some browns that are similar, maybe a blue shade that's really close, but when you swatch them, they really are different from each other. So again, I just think they're not the same. You can pinpoint some colors that are similar, but those colors are the same colors that are in all of the other palettes as well because, you know, Natasha does repeat herself sometimes. The Leela palette, just so you know, I think that these are probably the two most different palettes. Maybe one brown shade that's similar, but super different. The Star palette just pulls much more cool, if you ask me, compared to the Metropolis palette, which pulls a little bit more warm. So again, pretty different. A couple of those goldy shimmery shades are similar similar, but the vibe is different of the palettes. The Biba palette is surprisingly close, just taking a look because of all those neutral colors, even the neutral leaning warm colors. Very close. I do think though the Biba palette is just designated for a certain type of person. It's just so neutral, whereas the Metropolis isn't super neutral. You have a bunch of different things going on there as well. So these palettes are still for two different types of people, but yeah, I can see some colors in the same family, but I don't really see any dupes kind of eyeballing it right now. The Safari palette, again, you have that rich kind of orange family in there that is working together, but nothing too similar. What The Safari palette has some lighter cream colors, which I think are more suited towards light skin tones that the Metropolis just doesn't have. A few similar colors, but obviously you're getting much more dimension and texture and all of that good stuff in the Metropolis palette. Now the gold palette was one that people had a lot of, hmm, this is similar. And I actually did personally go through and kind of swatch colors side by side. There was one gold that was pretty close to another gold in this palette and a brown here and there was close, but maybe not quite the same. But honestly, I find these palettes to be pretty different. I would say of all of the palettes, maybe these two are probably the most similar or have the most amount of similar colors, which I would say this palette and the Mini Sunrise are the two most similar palettes, but they're still so different. The two blue shades in the gold palette are very different 
from the blue shades in the Metropolis palette just from swatching them side by side earlier today. So those are different. I would say that the golds are more similar than the blues are. And then finally, the Sunset palette. This one is just way too warm. The Sunset palette really goes there as far as the warm thing goes where the Metropolis palette does not. Similar shades, similar families, but different vibes between the palettes and different purposes. So that's just me kind of taking a quick look at comparing one palette to the other. Obviously, you know, if you have every Natasha Denona palette, there are going to be some dupes and some similarities. That's just the way it works. There are so many different shades. She's still trying to sell it to people who are actually going to use it. Like, she has a market that she needs to sell to. And people like browns. People like golds. So that's why she's repeatedly putting them in these palettes. And that's just the way it is. So I definitely feel like this palette is great for somebody who doesn't have a large Natasha Denona collection. And even for myself who has a large Natasha Denona on a collection. I really like this one. I really, really do. I wouldn't say it's my favorite and that I'm super excited about the color story here. I do really, really like it. Hopefully this video was helpful. I know it ran a little bit long. I'm sorry. I just wanted to get all of the information out there for you guys and all of my thoughts. That's all I have for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think of this video and this palette and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Have a good one.